Hi, this is Brittany Burns and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat. Have a happy Halloween and watch out for Curtis Danko. Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. Today we have a special guest joining the show. Uh, she has starred in things like Babe, H2O Add Water, the movie that we're talking about today, and she also coaches dance. Thank you for joining us today, Brittany. Yeah, thank you for having me, Pat. So we're gonna start off, you know, really easy with a question, just you know, how did you first get into acting? I, I started acting very, very young. Um, my mom has a dance studio here in Australia that existed before I was even around. So I, I grew up dancing there. Um, and that we have drama and we at that time did like speech and uh, I guess like poetry kind of competitions as well. So we were doing, it's kind of like elocution and, and speech performance, I guess, which my mom and my grandmother were teaching. Um, and I started doing that probably about age three or four. I was just a really uh, talkative, very into books, very into, I guess, showing off and <laughs> talking and stuff at a very young age. And um, I think it was one of the videos of those performances that we sent in to an agent. Um, it's weird because I started so young that I don't actually remember starting. I just kind of always did it. Yeah, and as a kid, when people would ask me, like, how did you get into it? I, like, I only know this story from my family. I don't remember it, you know? So I would always be like, I don't know. I just, I've always done it kind of thing, so. It was yeah. like almost one of those things that you're just kind of one of those kids that had a natural gift for kind of just wanting to kind of like perform. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's very like in the family, I guess. And yeah, I was reading and talking and all of that really early, memorizing lines really easily, that kind of thing. It was just sort of a natural thing for me to, to do, I guess. Like, no, that makes sense. And yeah. 2001, let me grab this right here. In 2001, you did a little film called When Good Ghouls Go Bad. And Ooh, yeah. you landed the, the lead role of Dana in the film. And, you know, just what was the audition process for, uh, for that? You know, what you remember? Um, I remember at the audition, we had the director and producer were there in the audition. The one that I remember, I don't know if that was a callback or if that was if there was only one, but I do remember that one. And because they were out from America, that was kind of a big deal to have them sitting there watching. Um, but I, I, I was sort of in the phase at that point, I was at a, a time in my life where I was working a lot. So I was used to auditioning um, a lot. Like, I don't want to say like I, I was overly confident, but I, I didn't start getting nervous to audition actually until I was older. So I was kind of um, like, okay, yeah, this is like just another audition, go in and do it. And yeah, I was really good at auditioning then because I think I was still too young to like be stressed about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I went in and learned my lines, did my thing, felt pretty confident. And um, yeah, <laughs> it, it was, it was even, even the casting agent was a place that I'd been to a lot of times because they cast a lot of things in Sydney and um, so I was confident even there and even confident with the casting director. I was just kind of like, you know, at 12, like old hand at it. And yeah, yeah, I was pretty confident actually, which is crazy to look back on. And I think you probably should have been a lot more nervous for that. You know? Yeah, no, I, I feel like that makes sense though. For, for being a kid, I feel like a lot of times kids just have that like natural like confidence. It's when, you know, like you said, yeah. when you're getting older and you have to do these certain things, you're like, you know, you start thinking of like, oh my God, like I don't want to like mess this up and, and different things yeah. like that. So I feel like as a kid, you're kind of just like, what's the worst that could happen basically? Yeah, and they're such amazing, like now looking back, I did such amazing things and I had these great opportunities, but I didn't see like the weight of it as a kid. And I wasn't kind of desperate to get the role or anything. Like as I got older, all of that stuff started to be really important to me. But as a kid, I was just like, oh, and you know, I was working a lot. I had a pretty good success rate. And I was like, yeah, if I don't get this one, I'll get another one. And I just, I, I can't believe that mentality now, but yeah. And you're, you're really not self-conscious. You're not worried really about messing up. All of that stuff comes in later. Yeah. And yeah. And even then people would be like, oh, where did you, where did you learn to act? Where did you study? And I was just lucky that I got into it early 
learnt kind of on the job and yeah as a kid you just you go with everything everything's just like okay cool that's what you do all right and you just do it and you don't worry if you look stupid or you know yeah it's just it's just how it goes and then later you, you know I'm sort of in my late teens early 20s being like should I study like oh my god and you start to worry about all these things that for 20 years haven't been a problem the over it's just the me of being a kid yeah yeah yep and now I'm, I'm really curious about this um, especially you know being Australia the movie was based on the book by you know legendary writer R.L. Stein were you familiar yeah. with his work prior to the film yes you were okay yeah. so I was a goosebump fan you were okay so that's what I was gonna ask were you like a goosebump fan like a fear street and like do you have any favorites like off the top of your head um not by title but there's one that I remember um I liked we had them in our library in primary school we had a lot of the goosebumps books in our library it was mostly goosebumps that were like, like the popular ones in Australia um and that's really awful but there was one about a librarian who like the kids sneak into the library and she's like eating bugs and stuff and she's actually like a monster and it's really awful but we had a really mean librarian at our school and so I was like picturing her as I was reading it and I just loved that and I just thought that was like the coolest thing ever um yeah. it's probably those and I loved all those like choose your own ending kind of ones as well and that was all kind of around that time and yeah yeah those are super that was, that was really cool I think uh my well I say it's a favorite looking back now but at the time uh this is more so more so the episodes too, but like the, uh, yeah. the haunted mask. So the haunted mask, I remember growing up and at the time, um, like first time like watching it or whatever with my mom and my mom was able to do like the voice of like the haunted mask. So she'd be like, hi, Carly Beth. And it just used to like scare the crap out of me like all the time. So she just like <laughs> traumatized me as like a little kid. But that, that uh, the one that stands up for me. <laughs> <laughs> but looking back now, it's all, you know, good, like, memories. Yeah. Now, um, in, so this is, you know, going back, in the making of the featurette, you mentioned you hadn't worked on a project before with as many special effects. What were some yeah. of your favorite ones from the film? Um, I think, in general, the fact that, obviously, it's a Halloween movie, but in Sydney, when we were filming it, it was summer. So it was very, very hot. So we're all in our jumpers and jackets and beanies and everything in the heat. And <laughs> they, there, there, was, there was so many moving parts to it that I, I had never experienced anything like that before. But, you know, they were color changing all the trees because all the trees were green. So they were all digitally changed to look like autumn trees. And then with that comes all those, the poor zombies in their prosthetics and everything. I think there's a scene towards the end where all the zombies are like dancing. Yeah. Um, and that was a particularly hot day. So there was all these poor extras in their masks and their prosthetics and everything, just every single break, everyone would sit down and just like, you know, there'd be people out with umbrellas trying to protect them in the sun and, and all of that stuff was really cool. And um, the other main thing that springs to mind is the little, the little hand that comes off in the window. That was really cool. And just seeing how, how all of that worked, I hadn't done any like chroma key green screen stuff before. Um, so seeing like, you know, the guy with just his hand with everything else green. And that was kind of a learning experience for me. That was really cool. Yeah, seeing no, all that stuff. It's definitely uh, this past, actually this past summer, I uh, was an extra on an Adam Sandler movie that's actually coming out like this, or it, hopefully it's coming out like this, like October. And it was a Halloween awesome. movie. And it was, uh, it was filmed again. It was filmed during the summer, you know, here in the States. Um, but it was, so it was like middle of July, you know, really, really warm out and, yep. you know, they had to make pretend that it was, you know, like the leaves and stuff were falling. So like they had a giant fan and someone yep. was like really dropping the leaves in front of it and blowing around. And it just, it's yep. really cool to, to kind of see like the behind the scenes stuff and see like a whole town decorated for Halloween in the middle of July where it's like, it's yeah, like exactly. degrees. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, all those little things that just, it all comes together. And when you're watching it and you just see those leaves blow past, you don't even think twice. But that was actually a guy standing there, you know, with the fan and the leaves. And yeah, that side of it is is so cool. Yeah. So it, it was yeah. definitely, it was fun to to kind of see like, you know, the behind the scenes aspect. So I, yeah, I, that would have been cool to be part of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you, you got the opportunity to work with legendary actor uh, Christopher Lloyd. What was that experience like? Um, it was cool. He, he is eccentric, but he's a lot more quiet than I think people would assume, which I kind of continually found that with any kind of high profile actors that I would work with, they would always end up being a lot more reserved than, than you would expect. And he definitely was, he was very, um, very kind. Like, you know, for us, so we were all a bunch of kids all hung out together the whole time. And he was always really lovely and sweet to us, but he would, he was very, very chill between takes. Like he would just kind of sit there and be off in his own little world and then spring to life kind of on action. And um, yeah, he was very, very nice, but not as I guess out there as people seem to think, but I get asked about him and it's, yeah, he kind of, he kind of saves his energy in the tank for the takes, I guess. Yeah, I was to say it's not like you know, like his characters like Doc Brown and and stuff like that. Mm. Where it's not like, you yeah, know, exactly. Like the place. Yeah, I, I yeah. met him uh, a couple of years ago at like a I went to you know one of these like conventions and he was there, and he did seem so that like you know that makes like sense now. He did seem very kind of quiet and yeah. he wasn't like talking a lot. He was very nice, but yeah, he just he yeah. wasn't really like talking a lot or anything like that. So that fits yeah, perfectly with that description. It's cool. Yeah, not standoffish or anything, but just um, just kind of reserved, I guess. Yep. And uh, Patrick Reed Johnson, he directed, you know, the movie. So what was it like working with him as the director? I absolutely loved him. Um, he had so much energy and was so, so passionate and so into it. I Like, I could tell that from the audition and then working with him and you know, he knew that he was working with kids, especially anytime he was with Joe and I, he was very um, engaging and very, very energetic. And yeah, I just thought he was so cool because he just knew everything about all these movies and old movies. And yeah, he just brought a lot of passion every single day. And I really, I remember that very vividly and very fondly that he was a really cool guy to, to just to be around. Yeah, it's awesome. awesome. To be able to, I mean, you kind of have to know, you know, definitely what you're doing too, especially when you're working with, you know, with mostly like kids, like in a movie, you got to be able to know like exactly where you want them and stuff like that. Cause I'm sure you guys are kind of wanting to like do kind of your own thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you do. I mean, all of us were fairly experienced. Joe was experienced as well. And, and you kind of, it's sort of, I don't know, you, you know that you, block it out, you get your direction. And then you, as a kid, especially, you are very, very trusting of the director. It's just kind of like that part of it, I always found interesting was watching it back later and realizing the way things looked to the way it felt like it looked when you're on a big set and you're doing something and then you watch the, what was actually filmed and the angles and everything, and it looks totally different. And so you are completely just trusting. They'll say, you know, walk up to here and hit this mark and then say the line and you just go with it kind of thing. And then you see what, how they put all of that together at the end. And um, yeah, we just, we really did though. We just had complete trust in him because we just, he was so cool. <laughs> and that, that's always, you know, definitely always like a big thing. Uh, yeah. So in this movie, your character, especially like Re, I mean, I, I watch this thing at least like once, like every year, it's definitely become like a, a Halloween uh -huh. staple. Um, your character, Dana, she has several scenes that really actually kind of stick out in the film. Uh, like the one where you're talking to Danny about, you know, just what happens to people like after they die and like, yeah. don't realize it like as like a kid or whatever, you know, watching the film, but then like watching it now, you're like, wow, those are some actually some really like deep scenes and stuff that they're like talking okay. about. Um, do you have like a favorite or like favorite scenes from the movie that stick out to you? Um, that is, that is definitely one of them but probably wasn't at the time. That's probably one that I, like you, like you watch it when you're older and you're like, damn, like, oh, wow. I was just, you know, saying the lines and being thoughtful kind of at the time. And I got the gist of it, but it's, yeah, when you're older, you're kind of like, wow, that was, that was really cool, actually. That was really deep. But I think the, um, the other kind of main monologue that she has uh, when she first shows Danny the, the haunted house that she's making, um, and, you know, she's going to make it the best Halloween ever and, and all of that. That one stands out to me because that was one of the audition scenes. So I learned it 
like very much as a monologue kind of standing delivering it to this boy and then on the day of filming it was so blocked out like we were walking you'd say this line coming through these doors and then this line walking down and there was so much more to it so I remember my brain being like oh my god oh my god oh my god and and I had a bit of a reputation for like being able to nail things in like one go but secretly to me that was a lot of pressure and it was like oh yeah Brittany like she'll be right so you're gonna walk through here and then you're gonna say this line and I'm like oh my god suddenly I forget all my lines like what are we doing it's walking it's here you feel the camera here you got this island and then you stop the camera's coming around while you're saying that last part and to me even the night before I was like oh yeah this is the one that I know like this was the audition scene I, I already know these lines so well and then when we got there there was all of those extra little bits and pieces to it and um kind of getting through that that part of filming for that day I was like Whew, that was cool and then watching it back obviously that looks really cool that that scene now I was gonna say it's almost like you're saying you know you kind of had like that reputation but you almost built up that reputation so it's like you can't like make a mistake now because right. like you said it's like oh yeah she right. always gets pressure done. yeah you know, okay well I bet actually I better get it this time but I, because the set itself you know quite often they're only kind of one facet or it's just kind of a backdrop or whatever it is but there were so many parts to that house that you could walk through and you could use multiple rooms and I think we hadn't spent much time on that set yet so we really were kind of walking around being like oh like this is so cool and you know the the uh the art department did an amazing job on all of that stuff it was that was really really cool yeah so if you could just yeah just talk a little bit more about uh the set you know working on like the house that was probably like one of my favorite sets you know in like the movie um so was it all just like one big like house that they they built or was it like separate different like rooms I know sometimes they like do that I think there was still some separate parts but it definitely it was kind of interactive like you could walk around it they it definitely had the feeling of like a whole haunted house the problem is when you're filming though because there's so much like equipment and stuff on the other side of the camera it was still very much we were just in wherever we were because then like all the gear and stuff is kind of put into the other spot you know what I mean so it was it was not like you could always kind of walk all the way through um but it did all link up it was like this the staircase and then that like entryway and then there was the doorway and that that all linked together which I thought was cool because I had worked mostly on like sound stages and stuff where it was just one room and then you would kind of pretend to go into the next room but then that was a whole different set so having the house as one one kind of big part that was cool so did you guys uh like in between like takes and stuff did you guys kind of walk around like wander around the house and stuff I imagine oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> the boys, especially like 12 year old kids, it was, it was the four of us, um, Joe and I and Craig and Dan, who were like the bullies. We were kind of always, always together. Um, and also because we filmed um, at Fox Studios, which is a, like a big studio, especially at the time in Sydney, there was a lot going on there. And it was, it was a place where um, they had things filming there, but it was also a place where people could visit kind of like a, a mini Universal Studios kind of cool. vibe. Not as cool, like it was like the Sydney version, but like, so we, um, I have a lot of memories of us like exploring around there if we had, you know, a lunch break or whatever and going and jumping on everything and looking around and yeah. Exploring. It, it, it was cool. It was definitely a very cool uh, time in my life. Filming that sounds like a lot of fun. And I imagine yeah, being that age and just having this gigantic, you know, haunted house to, to walk around and stuff. I'm sure you guys weren't bored in between takes or anything. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, so where the film is, you know, it's based on the holiday, like Halloween. Uh, let's talk a little Halloween. So what was fall Halloween like for you growing up? Um, we, around my area, we're not huge on Halloween. We kind of trick or treat but it's not like a big deal sort of as I got older there would be kind of dress up parties and things like that yeah. but it's not I am always kind of jealous to see even just you know like like what we had in the film like all the decorations and everything actually out on the streets we do all that for Christmas like my dad does a big Christmas lights and stuff every year but Halloween is not really that big of a deal here 
um, there's always kind of like, you know, Hocus Pocus comes on TV and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I would love to actually be in the States for a proper Halloween and see what it's like over there because it's just, it, yeah, it looks really cool. Oh yeah, you definitely, I'd say you have to definitely come over here. I would say like two places, well, one for sure that you would have to go to is uh, Salem, Massachusetts, where that's almost- yes, kind of I'd love to. Halloween. Um, they they go all out, go all out. If you want to see everything, you definitely I would say probably go like uh, end of September, maybe be, uh, beginning of like October here. Um, really? As, as you get closer to Halloween, it just gets like tons and tons of people. Like I think I looked it up and they get like something. It's like over five hundred thousand people or something visit there during like the month of October. Whoa! And yeah. and so that's all month. Oh yep, yeah. That's yeah. They, they, oh. Even when it's not Halloween, they still have stuff like you can actually, I know you mentioned uh, Hocus Pocus, you can go yeah. there and visit. Um, they have several of like the houses and stuff that you can actually see from the film or like, you know, like all located there. They have, you know, the yeah. aisles and everything. So if you, you know, if you get the chance, I would say try and go to Salem or like uh, Sleepy Hollow, New York. That was uh, pretty cool too as well. Like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So. That would be cool. Yeah, I remember I loved that movie. The yeah. Hollow, the one. yeah that would be cool that would be a cool place to go and visit i have friends in the states and they say that like they enjoy halloween more than christmas it's like you know what's your favorite holiday and they say and i'm like we don't even hardly get that here but they're like no it's so cool like the whole vibe and everything and especially yeah. i mean i guess i can't say for like you know the west coast because i haven't really been out there as much i for the most part i pretty much grew up here on the east coast of the the u.s and I feel like here, just because of like the history and everything, like the witches and stuff like that, it's really cool. Um, but I have heard like other places, but yeah, I mean, like, um, like myself, we actually do, we've been doing like a little haunted house kind of thing for the past like 10 years now, where we actually oh, yeah. have, like the whole like haunted house and kids come through and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. And, and so when I actually, I was, you know, I was looking stuff up, um, you know, for like Australia, I was curious, like it said, like some places aren't really as into like Halloween, like as you kind of like mentioned, and I was just like, man, like I can't imagine, I can't imagine like, you know, but I guess I wouldn't realize it like, you know, if I grew up that way, but not having or not being as into like Halloween as, you know, as you guys like kind of said that it's, yeah. it's there, but it's not something that you guys are like, oh my God. Yeah, it's not a big deal. And it's also like, I think with you guys as well and and the same with um christmas you know you have christmas in winter and halloween is that kind of the weather kind of adds to it as well which we don't have that here so it's like you know it's the end of spring into summer for us so yeah. you're already missing you know that autumny kind of with you know you guys have the pumpkins and all of that stuff which we like kind of try and do but it's just it's not the same i think the the season adds so much to it you know we have a summer christmas so even that's different but yeah so yeah. completely, completely different areas. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, if you had any traditions or things that you like to do each year, like leading up to Halloween, but I know you said it sounded like it's not as like as big, like really over there. Not really. No, I, I will usually go to a, go to a party. Um, and you, it's usually Hocus Pocus or whatever's on. There's usually like some Halloween movies that, you know, I'll watch and that's actually about it buy some lollies in case anyone comes to trick or treat and <laughs> that's it. Now, what about, I mean, this you could still, um, you know, still kind of like answer as far as, cause like in the movie, uh, the big thing is they're trying to, you know, like uh, open up like the, the candy factory and stuff again. So I have to ask you, what are some of your like favorite like candies? Ooh, I like, I'm a big chocolate fan, but it doesn't, we have Cadbury chocolate here. And I've been in the States. It doesn't taste the same. Yeah. So I, I like it here. But you guys have a lot of other chocolate bars that we don't have. We don't, I don't normally get like um, Three Musketeers and things like that. There's actually quite a lot that we don't get. It's dangerous over there. <laughs> you guys have so much different chocolate to us. You have uh, um, Reese's Kit Kats. Not usually. You can get them at like specialty stores. Like you get like overseas lolly shops and stuff like that. They'll have all the like the peanut butter flavored stuff and the cinnamon flavored stuff. That's kind of 
cinnamon and peanut butter to me are like American kind of flavors. Yeah. Um, we don't normally have that stuff. So yeah, you can get it at some like special places, but not normally just at the grocery store or anything. See, that, that's cool. Like I figured that would kind of be the case where, you know, things are quite a bit like different compared like uh, there to like here. So that's cool that you can yeah. get them at the like the specialty stores. Yeah, it's cool. And, and it's like, cause we go normally every year we go to um, Florida for the world um, dance championships. Yep. And my mom, like she's got her kind of list of like favorite things as well. And we, <laughs> the first thing we do is we will go to, to a Walmart or something and just stock up on all the lollies and the snacks and all the horrible, unhealthy stuff that we can try and take home with us to last us, you know? And then, yeah, it's yeah. silly. But yeah, yeah, we just, over the time of going there, we're like, oh, we're trying out all these different things. And you guys are lucky. You've got a big variety over there. Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely, it's it's good, but it, it's definitely bad. Like, this time of year, it's like, yeah, definitely got to watch, like, you know, what I'm, like, eating for like, the next, like, couple, like, months. Um, are there any specific memories from... You know, I, you mentioned a little bit about like the, you know, the house and stuff like that with the kids. Are there any other specific memories that you have from like working on the set or behind the scenes stories uh, on the film? Um, I don't know why it stands out, but the day of the party scene really, I, I can't remember why, but I really remember it. Maybe it was just Christopher Lloyd in the clown costume, I don't know, but filming that, it, just that scene where he's like, oh, get, can you get the dollar out of my pants or whatever it is? And there was all those kids all around. And that was, that was a whole day of filming kind of at that set of the party. And I, I really remember that, um, just that day. I don't know why, but that, that is one that kind of really stands out. Um, and also just kind of the, the lead up to it, like the wardrobe fittings and the early kind of rehearsals when nobody knew each other yet, that part's always like a little bit exciting. Um, meeting the other actors. I did, I did a few jobs around that age with other kids, but like quite often, you know, you'd be playing the daughter or you'd be playing a character where there's not other kids around. So a lot of, a lot of time that I would spend on set of other shows, I was the only kid. Um, so this one in particular was really cool and because the boys were so just energetic and excited to be there and it was just like it was a really fun energy to it so I guess the the early days of meeting everybody and um that that side of it was really fun yeah I, I can imagine like always getting to, to meet everyone kind of for the first time especially if you haven't like worked with anyone or worked with like the people like before would be would be fun you know for sure um yeah I can't believe looking at this film like right now it turns 19 years old this year uh i know it's a yearly staple for me and i've seen it you know like quite a few others like on um uh, it's on like youtube and stuff like right now you can like watch it and quite a yeah. few others like it's something that they like watch e each year why do you think that it's you know it, why do you think it's like held up like so well you know over like the years um I do, I do think that the quality overall is really good. I didn't watch it for a long time. And then I went back, it's sort of, it sort of started coming back up. You know, when I, I started, I started an Instagram and I was more on social media and I would get around this time of year, every now and then I get some people would tag me in photos of, oh, it's that time of year where I watch Good Ghouls. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's like a yearly thing that people do. So I, I watched it and I, honestly thought that I would be cringing a lot more. I was really pleasantly surprised. I was like, this is actually really good. You know, it's like watching home movies when you're a kid and it's embarrassing. But I, yeah, I watched it and I was like, this is great. And I think it's very, um, it's got that like heartwarming element to it as well. And I think people love tradition. You know, I do. I watch Love Actually every single Christmas. Like you, you like doing your staple things that you have for the holidays. Yep. And like, especially at my age now, I love nostalgic things. Like I'm, you know, I'm a big Harry Potter fan and I probably watch it more now than I actually did as a kid, just because there's certain, yeah, certain seasons or certain events where it's like, well, that's what we do. We watch this movie or, you know, I grew up watching Good Girls every Halloween. So now in my twenties or thirties, I'm going to watch it. And it's got that kind of nostalgic 
kind of feel good vibe to it, which I think is really cool. And like, I'm big on traditions like that. So I think that's really cool that other people have a film that I'm in as like a thing that they do every year that's part of their little tradition. I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, it's definitely up there, you know, with like with films like, you know, like Hocus Pocus, uh, Halloween yeah. Town and stuff like that, where it's like, you gotta, gotta watch it like every single year. And, um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I can't imagine, especially where it was something that you did when, you know, you were like a kid. I can imagine, you know, not having like watched it for like a long time, just being like, oh boy, like, how is this going to like be like when I, you know, when I watch it for the first time in several like years? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. And I mean, in Australia, like Babe will come on every Christmas. That's kind of a Christmassy movie. Yeah. And that's one that I just go, oh God, you know. Nine times out of ten, I would prefer not to watch anything because you just go the whole time. But yeah, and, and as I said, because it had been ages since I'd watched it. So it's also like, as you're watching it, the memories of filming each specific thing kind of come back to you as well. Yeah. So it's not, it's not just like you're just watching yourself. It's like you're, you're watching it being like, oh, I remember that day. And I remember filming that and what was really going on or, you know, like the guy with the leaves with the fan. Like that's all of that stuff is all going through your mind as you're watching one scene. Yeah. Um, and that side of it, I find really cool revisiting the whole like experience of like a, a film yeah yeah no i get that and another one so like i said before you know dana she had a couple lines that just like really especially now like stood out to me uh one of my other like favorite lines in the film is from where she's saying if you don't get to survive being scared as a kid how are you ever going to survive being scared as an adult and there's so much more to be scared of so what are you scared of Oh, that is a good question. That is a deep question. Um, <laughs> It'd be something you know, silly like I'm at spiders or, or whatever. Um, yeah, on the silly level, I, I'm getting over, I'm, well, I'm not getting over it. I'm working through it, but I'm a, I have a bird phobia. I don't like birds. I got like, I got attacked by a chicken when I was young. And I've just never gotten over it. And we have in Australia, we have, especially actually it's coming into magpie season, but we have magpies that like swoop and attack you. And it's, it's, I'm terrified of them. And I just always have been. And even just the sound of like their wings, like coming towards you, it's just freaks me. I'm not, I'm not a bird fan at all. Trying to, trying to deal with it. But yeah, I, that's been like a lifelong, like a lifelong thing is birds. Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's such a time of just like anxiety in general for everybody. I feel like everybody's kind of heightened just with the way that the world is at the moment. So, and I mean, that's not necessarily a fear, but it's just kind of, I like to know what's going on in my life. And then have, having that kind of uncertainty is a worry. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I don't blame you with the, uh, I mean, I, I'm not afraid of like birds, but I could see especially having something like that as like a kid, like you know, like a bird like swooping and like attacking you or something. Could definitely yeah, and I saw I saw Alfred Hitchcock's birds and that sealed the deal. I was just like, nope, no, nah, that's it. I, I can't give them the same. Was that that was that after uh, the the bird? I think it was after. Yeah, I think it was after. So yeah, that probably wasn't too good of an idea. <laughs> nope, no, nope, horrible. And. Uh, when good ghouls go bad, you know, looking at like back on like your career, you know, so far, I notice it's really the only time that you, you know, you've done like a, a Halloween scary, like, you know, type of film. Um, what was just that experience like, you know, compared to everything else that you've done so far up to this point? That's a good question. Um... I know that it, I know that it is more of a Halloween film, but it also felt like it was more comedy than what I had done before, to be honest. Like it still had the kind of family feel, which a lot of the like Aussie shows and stuff that I'd done in the lead up were kind of family based or kids stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had that vibe to it, but I hadn't done um, really any anything funny before that was timing and you know, obviously having Christopher Lloyd there delivering the jokes was the best, like, learning experience you could have. Um, but there's, a, yeah, there was a couple of those moments that I remember being a little bit nervous for because I hadn't, re I'd really only done kind of, like, straight stuff until yeah. then. 
Um, and there was all, there was that kind of physical kind of element to it, which was, that's probably what was more different about it than anything else. Cause I think the, the spooky kind of side of it was not super amped up in this film. It still sort of had that kind of family, do you know what I mean? Kind of vibe to it. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I know like right now you're, you know, kind of like taking a, a break, like from acting and stuff. Would you, you know, if you decide to, you know, pick that back up, would you see yourself, would you like want to do like another kind of like, you know, holiday, Halloween, or like even like a scary like type of like movie, like in the future possibly? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. I, um, yeah, I, I as I said, I like uh, the idea of, I like the idea of how Good Ghouls is part of people's kind of traditions. And I would love to do something else that's that's kind of like that. Even even H2O at the moment, because that's on Netflix, so many people, again, who are my age, they're not really the target audience, but they're going back to it for more nostalgic purposes. And for me at the moment, maybe it's just like the kind of zone that I'm in in life at the moment, but I, I'm into watching things for comfort and just watching feel good things and holiday movies or comedies or whatever. And I, I think when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have kind of aspired to do that. I would have wanted to do something more kind of serious, but I really see the value in those things now, especially this kind of time as has taught me that. And the amount of messages I get about the more kids kind of stuff that I've done and just seeing the comfort that it is to people and the joy that it brings to people. I just think all of those holiday kind of movies, like that's what I gravitate to. If I sit on Netflix, I don't really necessarily want to watch anything kind of heavy. Yeah. I would go more to like a holiday type of movie at the moment. And I, yeah, I really see the value in those movies now. So it's definitely something I'd like to do more of. Yeah, no, I think it, and it's, you know, it, it must just be really cool too to, to be, you know, like, as we kind of like mentioned before, be a part of, you know, like, all these people's like you know like traditions that they go go back like every year and they watch like this movie that you were in you know like you know a number of years ago but they go back and watch it every single year you know because not everyone gets the opportunity to do that as you know like an actor so uh, to have like and you get you have a couple projects like said with h2o you know people going back and like re-watching that so that feeling mm. and that must be pretty cool to just get yeah, to know that you're a part of like you know these people's like traditions and stuff like that every single yeah. time yeah it's so cool and it's it's like you don't know it at the time either because you're just doing it and it's kind of a very delayed kind of gratification of a few years later being like oh wow people are still watching this and yeah you you never know when you're doing something if it's gonna and and even good ghouls i didn't feel like was that big of a deal at the time i feel like it's sort of over the years people watch it more and more and even the same with h2o as well it's just kind of yeah it's it's aged really well yeah. so yeah you don't know it at the time but it's kind of really cool now to be like oh that's that's really great that you know to be part of that for people yeah and to wrap things up so a little to kind of go off the the good ghouls topic real quick to, just because i think you know this is really cool but to wrap things up i also just wanted to ask you you know what led you to coaching and choreographing uh, dance like you do today? I know you started at uh, dancing at like a really young age, but what kind of led to that transition? Um, I'm lucky, as I said, that it's my mom's studio. So because life was a little bit, I guess, unpredictable while I was acting, and especially in my kind of teens, I was you know, you'd have a job for a couple of months and then not, and then have a job and then not. So she would just let me kind of teach sort of casually in my teens when I wasn't filming. And it was just kind of a bit of a safety net to come back to. And I did enjoy it, but I wasn't really like obsessed with it the way that I am now. And it's kind of the timing of things. Uh, things were sort of slowing down a little bit with acting. And I, I personally at the moment really want to stay in Australia. That was kind of a big kind of career decision for me is that I, I tried my hand a little bit, not a lot in the States and in Canada and was very, very homesick and kind of was just like, I want to be in Australia right now. Let's just, I know it's going to be slower and less work, but let's just stay home and see what we can do. And sort of at the time of making that decision, that's when the team that I was in, um, we got chosen to represent Australia at the world championships. And 
like I'm a very competitive person as well. So that sort of side of it of getting way more competitive than it sort of was when I was growing up really kind of piqued my interest. And um, I ended up, it just kind of happened that I ended up devoting more and more and more time into that and um, really connecting with um, the dancers that I was coaching. And that's kind of the side of it that I really like now is the kind of mentoring side of things and, and coaching the actual girls themselves, not just as, as dancers. Um, and I really found that so rewarding. And then it's just kind of happened as things kind of were slowing down in acting. And it is a little bit like I do believe a bit in, you know, you get what you put your energy into is what comes back to you the most. And I just kind of naturally started putting a lot more focus on dance and then that was getting more and more successful. And now it's kind of really snowballed and I'm doing really well there. Um, and I did, I have now made a conscious decision that I'm on a break from acting. I just want to leave it for a while. Um, do what I'm really passionate about. I'm not, I'm not necessarily never going to do it again. Yeah. I'm just low at the moment, but I'm really, really loving everything that I get to do with dance. And that's taken me around the world as well. And, you know, I've been very, very lucky with that too. So I'm just enjoying that ride now while I can and then see what happens. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, congratulations on that too. I mean, it, it yeah. sounds like it would be a lot of fun, yeah, just being able to, you know, travel all, all over the place and, and stuff like that. And it's good that, you know, you knew to, to kind of put, you know, acting off to the side right now and do something that you're really, really passionate about, so. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's it as well. Like, I sort of felt a bit when I was younger, like, you know, hurry up, you've got to, you've got to be successful and you've got to get to this point by this time. But, I mean, when you watch a film, there's still the role of the mother, there's the grandmother. Like, I could come back to this way down the track and there's, there's still roles for any age, so it's not kind of you know, that didn't click with me for ages. I was just like, oh my God, you know, I've got to get this, this career going. And really maybe it's not the end of the world to take a little breather and, and a refresher and come back to it later and, you yeah. know, come back a bit fresh and, and be doing different things. Cause by that stage, I'll be in a different, you know, time in my life, which is probably a good thing as well. And um, yeah, see what happens. And now, Brittany, is there anything else that you would want to say to, you know, all the fans out there? So it doesn't necessarily have to be just, yeah, the when the good ghouls go bad fans, but, you know, you're just your fans in general. Anything else you want to say to them? Um, not really. I would like to just maybe just say thank you. I, um, lately on social media, I have been just really inundated with just a lot of kind messages and positivity and, um, you know, social media is not always a place for that. So it's been really nice lately to just, I don't know what's changed, but people just seem to be really um, just coming to say, oh, I'm watching this show or I've, I've just seen you on this. And I'm loving it and just being really, really kind and really nice. So thank you to everybody that has been um, kind of getting in touch to do that and just keep that up. More of that in your everyday life would be great to, to people that you don't know and people that you do know as well. Just... I think I'm really definitely passionate about using social media for positivity, you know, commenting nice things, messaging nice things to people. And um, yeah, I'm happy that I've been seeing that lately. So thank you to everybody definitely who has been doing that and keeping it, keeping it positive and keeping it nice. Yeah, I was going to say, spread the positivity, people. Be nice to each other. We, we need that right now. Please, please, exactly. We all need it. And it's, it makes you feel better as well, you know. It's good yeah. for you to do too. Well, Brittany, uh, thank you so much again for you know for taking time out of your day. I know you're you're very busy, so I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come on the show and uh, talk a little when good ghouls go bad. Yeah, I mean, I was excited to talk about this one, so I'm very 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 happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It was cool. You're very welcome. Hi, this is Brittany Burns, and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat. Have a happy Halloween and watch out for Curtis Danko.